Well, today we're solving a bit of a mystery. I made a video on this rifle for Patreon uh, not long ago. I haven't owned this rifle for a long time. I bought it more or less sight unseen, but I knew that the rifle came with this just magnificent Unertl scope. For those of you that aren't familiar with Unertl, uh, it's an older scope design. You can see that the adjustments for windage and elevation are external to the scope. And um, the fellow that built these scopes, of course, through his company, uh, was named Unertl. I think he had worked for a company called Fecker in Germany, F-E-C-K-E-R. This is a 10 power scope. So I don't want to focus on the scope because the mystery of the rifle um, was actually quite interesting. So fantastic scope. It has an adjustable objective for parallax. We've set up a target um, at over 100 yards or meters. And I thought I'd talk about that just briefly. A lot of people were saying, you know, you shoot, you shoot at short range. This, this is true. And this is because if you um, are studying ballistics or anything, we all know that on paper we can see the trajectory of any given cartridge. And it's interesting to shoot the rifle, let's say, out to 100 yards. Past that, 200, we're talking now about things like Mirage, the shooter skill, which I'm sometimes lacking, and um, the wind, uh, all, all kinds of variables. So we're not really measuring this, the, the ability, the, the accuracy ability of the rifle. Uh, the rifle, we can determine the accuracy at 100 yards or even arguably at 25 yards in much the same way as theoretically we use physics to calculate you know, how to get to the moon and Mars, we don't go there first and then calculate backwards or something like that. We can extrapolate. So I learned that kind of earlier in my shooting career, let's say. So I'm quite comfortable sighting in at 25 yards or 100 yards. And then I know that the trajectory of the bullet will be what the published trajectory is. Anyway, we've got a target a little further away, but I'm probably avoiding the point. So this was sold to me as a seven millimeter rifle, but no one could figure out what the caliber was. So I immediately thought that it might be a 284. And it's a pre-64 action. It, it's a single shot. Somebody went to a great lengths with this laminate stock. It's quite a heavy rig. I don't know who made the barrel. I believe the barrel is stainless, Somebody tried to put some bluing on it, but you always get that gray kind of mottled look, which is fine. I tried 284, that didn't chamber. I tried 280 because I thought it might be 280 Ackley improved, but it's not 280 Ackley improved. That wouldn't chamber at all. I tried 708, I tried 7 by 57 Mauser. Um, I thought maybe somehow somebody built a target rifle in 7 by 57 which would be perfectly fine for the time. In the end, um, after trying a whole bunch of other 7 millimeter cartridges, I found that the 7 by 64 chambered. I had this old ammo kicking around and I was very happy when the bolt closed and I did some um, test shots. Naturally, at some point I took a chamber casting and it still didn't help me all that much because I, and, and, and frankly, it, you'll see it, it really doesn't tell you all that much until you actually shoot the rifle. Uh, so now I've, I've fired, I mean, this is an exceptionally accurate rifle, even in my hands. And, um, we set up a little primitive bench here. I never have all that much time to set up for these videos. I'm sort of a uh, uh, practical uh, person. I, when I can, I get out and make a video. Uh, 
for you and for, for me. It's, I, I, I love shooting. Uh, the scope is excellent. The cartridge works perfectly. Whoever built this uh, knew all about accuracy, free floating barrel. The bore is incredibly spotless and smooth. Uh, must have been some lapping going on with that. And bef before I um, you know, bore you to turn off, the show, um, I just wanted to say that I always look for rifles like this because I can learn about how we arrived at the point we are with rifles and accuracy. And uh, on a recent video, we reviewed the Beretta, what a magnificent rifle. And uh, you know, the 40X Remington some time ago and the Accuracy International. Um, it was an incremental learning process for all of us, how to extract maximum accuracy at extremely long range. And of course I couldn't, I can't know the people who are past that did all this accuracy experimentation and studying cartridges and wildcats and so on. So I learned from the rifles themselves. And as you know, I've owned hundreds of them. Uh, this is one of the most interesting ones in case you're wondering um, as a sidetrack, why this spring is here. A lot of shooters won't be familiar with this. So as I said at the outset, the adjustments are external to the scope, which can allow for a very strong scope because there's not much room in a scope tube. It doesn't matter whether it's one inch or 30 millimeters or 34 even. Uh, those are pre pretty small parts. And um, initially the idea was to keep the scope the integrity of the scope intact. In fact, if you go to an observatory, um, you'll see how hard they work to preserve the integrity of the telescope, although that's for a different purpose and that's a different story. Anyway, so um, you can see it, it moves. If I tighten this down, when I fire the rifle, uh, the scope will appear to move forward. Everyone says the scope moves forward. Uh, actually, as some of you have pointed out to me, and, and I knew this, um, it's the rifle that's moving under the scope uh, because this, anyway, it's not worth going into it, but uh, whoever owned this before me, and apparently this was in a closet for 40 years, uh, didn't decide to tighten the, the spring to return it to battery. And I'm just keeping it that way because I shot it now and it's, it's fine. Um, I don't. I, I don't mind um, moving the scope. In fact, I forgot because I forget things, and the point of impact did not change. I just. But theoretically, one should move the scope back to battery. So what we'll do is, um, if you don't know the seven by sixty-four, um, you can always Google it, and it's a very common cartridge in um, Europe. Uh, in fact. I think to this day, it's one of the best-selling rounds over there, very similar to the 280 uh, Remington, which is really a neck down 30-06. And it is possible that this is still some kind of derivative from a 280 Remington, I'm not sure. But all I know is the seven by 64 shoots to one hole at this 100 yard distance. If we wanted to shoot further, as I said, we would, that becomes more of a science experiment. We would, you know, measure wind here and out there. And I've done all that stuff. And it's very interesting and fantastic. And there are better cartridges than this and better rifles than this. But for its time, and actually arguably to this day, this is a perfectly acceptable, extremely long range rig. 10 power may not sound like much but for a whole bunch of other factors which were, aren't worth going into, um, I can shoot a long ways in these mountains with this 10 power unirdal scope. When we arrived here, it was sunny. Now it's going to rain. So um, I better stop talking and take a few shots and show you the brass that comes out of this after I fire because I'm essentially fire forming what it's chambered for. What it's chambered for, I have no idea. You'll see it's a very unusual looking, it kind of it looks like an Ackley kind of improved cartridge, but I, I have Ackley improved 
cartridges, and it, this one doesn't match any of those. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll go to shooting, and then you can see for yourselves. I forgot my fancy rifle rest, so I'm just using this gun case for the, for the rifle. And I'm just using a card table, you can see all this. And um, here's the 7x64. This is commonly available. And since it's a single shot, somebody made the most beautiful feed ramp that I've ever seen for a bolt action rifle. And it's a pre-64 action, so it's, some people would say it's not ideal for target work. Uh, but this rifle doesn't seem to have learned that it's not a target rifle because unbelievable accuracy. So we'll just drop a round in and um, you can see way down there is what I'm shooting at, but that's not the point. We know that the rifle is accurate. Wait till you see the brass. So here is the mystery solved. And what I should do is just stand it up here. And this is the, this is the seven by 64. And you can see that this brass has been annealed. That's a heat treating process. Um, I have no cracking happening. That shoulder is so far forward on a case uh, but there are no issues with fire forming so far. Excellent, and excellent initial accuracy. So I can take this brass now and I have a perfect uh, fit for this chamber and I can probably improve things still. And I, I can probably go over the details of the rifle maybe another time, but um, this is uh, one excellent rig. This is all adjustable. Uh, the, the star of the show, of course, is the rifle, but the inertial scope is something else. We'll take another shot. Now, what happened is on shooting, um, this, this uh, it can't be higher velocity than normal for the 7x64. Theoretically, velocity should be slightly lower, but in any event, our target collapsed. So I'll, I'll fire another round at that remaining plate. We have three. AR-500 plates down there um, for this round. And I, you know, I don't know what you can see in the camera, but a storm is rolling in, which happens all the time up here. Well, that target stayed up, and um, if I didn't mention it already, that's, you know, 100 yards plus or 100 meters plus. There's just no missing with this, with this inertial scope. And you notice I'm not even returning it to battery, which maybe I should be doing. Maybe I'm transmitting shock to the scope. Um, you have to bear in mind, if you return it to battery, there is virtually no shock on the scope, which is desirable considering that they're pretty delicate instruments. I know that we overcame that by improving the internals, but Take a couple more shots.
Okay, well, I have a good um, selection of brass now, so I can pick up some, you know, Hornady's or Sierra's or or Nosler or whatever, and and I, yeah, I I have no problem. I don't see any signs of excess pressure or anything. I think I'm pretty close. I still find it very unusual that somebody would make a seven by 64 improved. That somehow slips in my mind. It may be it's a 280 improved, but of a different character. Anyway, isn't that um, like a dramatic shoulder? It's way up there. The neck is really short. Um, we can measure how much water this case holds and compare it at some point. Probably not a worth of, worth a video, but I mentioned it for younger viewers. There's always a way to do things um, so that uh, you can you can then make this work with with the brass that it's designed to work with. Although uh, this seven by sixty four seems to be totally acceptable. I'll shoot a couple more times. There's something about that unertal scope. I'll have to think about it. It's very easy to be instantly on target, or maybe it's just psychological, um, or my confidence in the rifle because of the shooting we did before filming. Uh, this, this really would be a significant rifle, even, even out to 500 yards, which isn't that far these days. People are doing that routinely, but for me, uh, that's um, uh, that's exceptional performance, and I like that one-shot feature. That's a that's a good thing. I'll see. Ah, we're getting a little warm. We'll shut it down. Anyway, um, that's the mystery solved for this um, old but incredible pre-64 target rifle. And you know, this is one of those rifles with so much character and so much accuracy. Uh, we, we, I probably will keep this one for, for a while. All right. Well, I hope you find that interesting. We touched on a whole bunch of different areas from theoretical ballistics and to the scope, to, to learning things from the past through the items. Uh, this is a big part of why I find firearms and all kinds of mechanisms interesting, even physics. And when you look back at the way people thought, what calculations, what assumptions did they make? Uh, we were always building on that, but we can't talk to the people, so we can only go by what's left. Okay, well, thank you for watching, and, and we'll see you next time. Take care until then.